Welcome back, gang. It's Delta from DeltiasGaming.com, and the time has arrived for my first Arcanist build, a PvE solo build that absolutely melts them health bars. So in this video, I'm going to break down all the important components of a Stam Arcanist build, how it works, why, skills, gear, champion points, and more. So you need to know if you should pick this build up, if you're looking at the Necrom chapter, why or why not. The Arcanist currently has gotten a lot of buffs, and it's set to go live June 5th on PC and June 20th on on consoles. When it drops, it's going to have a massive amount of damage coming from a 4.5 second long channel, which you're going to constantly see in this footage, Fate Carvers. So it has really good range built in and a lot of the abilities are range, which leads to you having a lot of flexible weapon choices to pick up and really craft this build as your own. The downsides is it is vulnerable by beaming. So you're going to be taking pressure, you might be eating a heavy attack, and it's a very different playstyle because you have to aim the beam. So it takes a bit to get used to. You also really needed to lean into hybrid which I'll get to a little bit more because the way the skills work and what they cost is different from anything in the Elder Scrolls Online and it does have some gear dependencies for survival and damage but like always I will give you a ton of flexible options so you can pick this up regardless of what stage you are in the Elder Scrolls. And as always link in the description yeah check the website do me a big favor hit that thumbs up it's free leave me a comment about what you liked in this video or if it sucked. Moving on let's explain what the Arcanist is, how to use it, and give you some gear. So the Arcanist skills. I'm going to be using this build as dual wield and fire staff. So my front bar, what I found is making it more simple equals more damage. You do not want to play this build like the normal, boring six other classes that are just spam damage over times and do very little main spam wolves. It's quite the exact opposite. So it starts with the main premise of the build, Exhausting Fate Carver. There's two really strong morph. This morph, Exhausting Fate Carver, does an enormous amount of damage, but it costs a lot more resources. The other one, Pragmatic, is better for beginning players because it gives you a huge shield. So what this does is it channels for 4.5 seconds and a 22 meter radius and you have to aim it. The unique thing about this ability and some of the Arcanists is the cost is determined by max resource. So whatever attribute is your highest, that's what the cost will be determined to. So it's not a magic versus a stam morph, it's whatever your attributes are set to. This is why you really need to lean into hybrid, more on that later. So with the exhausting fate carvers, it does an enormous amount of damage and you wanna consume cruxes to increase the damage per crux consumed. If you don't know what cruxes are, I did a little bit of video on that earlier. But what it does is some skills generate cruxes, the green little thing around your character, and then some skills consume cruxes to get increased damage, better resource sustain, more healing and so forth. So the Arcanist general premise and the skills are building up cruxes and then dumping them for Fate Carver doing huge massive damage. That general premise is in healers, tanks, DPS, PvP, and so on. So you need to know why you're generating, how you're generating cruxes, and then when you're at max, what to dump it into. Max is three if you don't know. And what we're going to do is simply generate very easily and then dump them into exhausting Fate Carver when we have a big three stack nuke ready to go. Now, what generates our cruxes for us? It's this flail ability. So this is also a 0.3 second channel. Very careful here because you might get nuked with a heavy attack if this is coming in. It also is 15 meter radius, so it has some range to it. It's going to deal physical damage. It's going to generate a crux, but you need to actually hit a target. So you just can't spam this out of combat and do it. It also deals a little bit more damage to enemies uh, 50 below health. It's a weak execute. It's really not meant to be used like that, but you also get an abyssal ink debuff. So you drench an enemy or enemies and it increases the damage to those by 5%. So you're going to use this as a debuff and you're also going to use this as kind of a spammable to hit targets and build cruxes up to feed into your exhausting fate carver now the other ability on the bar that's really important to understand and maintain is recuperative tradices i'm sure i screwed that up but what this does is really unique it gives you a little bit of damage when you're striking the enemy with your class abilities it also will help resource sustain you the other morph does really really good damage if your resource sustain is good so you have flexible options depending on your gear skill level champion points just take the other morph if you have enough resource sustain and want more damage when you slot this on either bar you gain major brutality and major sorcery either bar so it can be front it can be back it doesn't matter the reason i put this on my front bar is just easier to keep an eye on it and maintain it also you get some penetration from slotting these skills and that specific skill line on the front
jump bar. We're using medium armor. We want more penetration. More on that later. But this is going to resource sustain you. This more particularly. And it's going to do a little bit more damage. And it has a 30 second duration. And it costs a lot of magic. So those are basically the three main skills on your front bar. Now, the back bar is going to have a bunch of dots, and we're going to get to that a little bit later. But what I found out with the Arcanist is, keep it simple, stupid. Don't load up your bar with tons and tons of dots because you're really geared towards doing that channel, Fake Harbor, as often and early as you can to really ramp up your damage. So I went with two Fighter's Guild abilities. Let me explain why I use these. The first is Camouflage Hunter. This simply gives us our weapon critical buff on our front bar. And if we flank hit an enemy with a crit, we get minor berserk increases in our damage. And the Fighter's Guild Passive Slayer gives us increased weapon and spell damage for slotting Fighter's Guild abilities. And if that's not good enough banish the wicked passive gives us three ultimate whenever you kill an enemy with the fighter's guild ability slotted so it pumps up your weapon and spell damage passively you're sitting there gives us our crit and then we have that other ability tradices which gives us our weapon and spell damage buff allowing us to use a bunch of different potion options now the other ability is a flex spot i have barb trap which i also have another ability that gives the same buff that barb trap does which is a critical damage buff really i found that just setting something on my bar with fighter's guild to get even more weapon and spell damage damage was more beneficial typically than another dot. You don't know Barb Trap does an exceptional amount of damage and it procs the hemorrhage status effect, a very high chance, which the Arcanist has a specific passive that increases the chance of status effects called Sigic Lesion. You don't know the Arcanist is really built around status effects. That's why we're going to lean into a destruction staff on our back bar. That's why the hemorrhage status effect and getting that to proc, if you look in, you do so much damage with that specific status effect. That's why we use Barb Trap. This is a flex spot on your bar. So what I typically flex in and out, depending on the content that I'm doing, is one, I will flex in Structured Entropy from Mage's Guild. This is a range dot and it heals for quite a bit. This is fantastic for beginning players or someone that just doesn't have enough survivability. Another one, speaking of beginning players or someone that might lack in resource sustain is from the Soul Magic Beginning Skill Consuming Trap coming from the Soul Magic Skill Line. When you kill an enemy, it's gonna fill up a gem and basically give you health, stamina, and magicka. So it's gonna really resource sustain you and it does a little bit of a dot. Another thing that I do that's a bit niche, but if you're doing VMA and you really want fast clears or even Vanish Ram Hollow, is the Fighter's Guild ability Silver Leash. What this does, it just pulls enemies in. So you can pull a bunch of trash mobs and nuke them very quickly instead of like parsing them down one at a time. And it's also a Fighter's Guild ability, so it's up to you. Last flex option, because I'm giving you a lot here, but I want you to walk away with knowing what to do and why is Deadly Cloak from Dual Wield. Since we're using Dual Wield, might as well put on Deadly Cloak if we're in heavy AoE damage situations because this ability does really good damage, lasts for 20 seconds, and reduces AoE damage by 20%. Simply putting it, casting it, makes you much more tanky and you don't have to activate it. Downside is you need to be in melee range. And then last ability on our bar is another fighter skilled ability. We're mainly gonna slot this Flawless Dawnbreaker just to basically passively boost our weapon and spell damage. It costs 125, so it's dirt cheap. I don't really use this almost ever because our other ultimate, our back bar is 175 ultimate, and it's really, really easy to use. All right, we're here in game. Let's just talk about the front bar, how do I use it and why, just real quick, and then we'll do the back bar, do the whole skills. This will make a lot more sense, bear with me. First, we're gonna buff with through a trade of seas, which is gonna give us a little bit more damage and help us resource sustain. We're gonna come in close and we're gonna lie attack. And you can see I build that crux right there, right? We're gonna wait and wait till we get to three. And now when I got three, you can see my ability lights up on my bar. The number two key lights up. That's your visual indicator. And it's not an add-on that you're ready for a three stack B. So now we're gonna hit Prismatic Fate Carver or Exhausting Fate Carver rather. And you can see I'm doing damage. I have to aim it though. So if I'm not on the target, it's not gonna hit. See that? So you really need to be focused. When I started using this class, I was like aiming at the ground and hitting all sorts of stuff. No, 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 no. You really got to hit it right there and aim dead on center mass for it to hit. Also, when you're refreshing your buffs, you can put Barb Trap down to get a little bit of extra damage. And we're just going to leave Dawnbreaker there. And that's really the simple rotation. When you go to the back bar, it's more utility, more damage over time. 
and a little bit more debuffs. Speaking of back bar, let's jump on it. Let's come to the back bar and we're gonna use a fire staff. And mainly the reason I'm using a fire staff is you can resource sustain magic with it. it, has a couple good abilities. One being absolutely god tier elemental susceptibility, one of my favorite abilities in the entire game right now. What it's gonna do is give major breach for 30 seconds. It has an enormous range and costs literally nothing. Major Breach is going to increase your damage significantly. If you don't know, I kind of say this in every video, Veteran Content 18,200 is the resistance cap on enemies. So you're trying to reach that cap as close as possible. So you always need to source a Major Breach for solo build because no one's going to provide it for you and it will drastically increase your damage. Elemental Susceptibility has the added advantage that it applies status effects, burning, chilled, concussed, all increasing your damage along with major breach. Cost nothing, it is single target. So I do flex a skill out for more AOE trash bowls, or if I'm gonna encounter something like VMA where they're spawning. That's Razor Caltrops from Assault and Support skill line. This also gives Major Breach. You have to uh, cast it a bit more, but it does really good AOE damage and it costs stamina. So that's your Major Breach skill. Now, another ability on our bar is Channel Acceleration. This is an optional ability since we're using Barb Trap. But the reason Channel Acceleration coming from the Sigic Order is so dang strong is it lasts for almost ever. You get a minute of minor force and 12 seconds of major expedition. So you can precast this before the big nasty boss fights and almost guarantee that you're gonna have minor force the entire time, increasing your critical damage by 10%, doing an enormous amount more damage. Sigic Order is a pain, so don't feel like you have to get this. This could be a flex bot from the skills I've already mentioned if you're gonna use Barb Trap and play a little bit closer in melee range. Now, moving on to one of the dots, if not the only dot this has is Fulminating rune. This is a very interesting skill because the cost is determined by the lowest max resource, not the highest. Since we're leaning into stamina, this will cost magicka. So that's why you can see we need a lot of magic sustained with this specific ability. It's 22 meter range, has a 5 meter radius, 20 second duration. It does a lot of damage and a little blow up effect later. The other morph will actually do a suck in, which is kind of useful for basically pulling in a bunch of trash mobs, but this will do the most damage single target. This isn't necessarily, oh my god, I have to stop what I'm doing at all times and apply this. This is more of something that will add a little bit of damage overall. You can also use a shield from in class in this specific spot if you struggle with survivability. And I would go with Spite of the Lucid Mind shield in class. It's not going to be that much, but it's better than nothing. Moving on to Elemental Blockade, I go with the Unstable Wall of Elements. This is a fire staff, does a lot of AoE damage, and would pair as well with the Maelstrom Arena staff, doing a lot of damage passively. I'm going to show you a little something in game that makes this a lot more powerful and you need to understand why this is so important to maintain. We're in game here. What people don't necessarily explain to you is this perfecting crushing wall set. We're going to get to gear in a little bit, but you see that enchant with the infuse increase weapon and spell damage by 452 for five seconds. So if I just hit this little guy here, you can see it kind of proc in the bottom middle of my screen. Procs right there, that berserker enchant. Now what happens if I cast this guy and then I bar swap? You can see it's proc right wait for it and it reprocs it reprocs over and over and over and over look it just did again there this is why it's so important because this skill when you cast it flip to your front bar will still increase your weapon and spell damage dramatically. Consider this, along with your major breach skill, almost mandatory to maintain because both of them together will dramatically increase your damage overall in comparison to the Fulminate Rune. Now I have my survivability skill and I like go with Resolving Vigor rather than the shield. I found that more helpful for me. Resolving Vigor PvP skill comes from Assault and what it does is does a bit of healing over time. It also gives you minor resolve, so increasing your physical and spell resistance for 2,974 for 20 seconds. So it's a five second heal. It's kind of bursty. You could put a shield here in class or use another ability if you want, but we should have plenty of stamina to sustain this and get us a nice heal. And now our last ability on our bar, this ability got buffed up a lot. It was really weak when it started, but the ultimate, the Tides King guys, 175 ultimate at last eight seconds, five meter radius and 15 meter range. I actually like this better than Mage's Guild when I tested it out. They were roughly around the same amount of damage, but the thing about this is it just channels so fast and it follows a target. So a lot of times when you drop a meteor, the shooting star morph of Meteor Mage's Guild, you'll just move out of the area. Another common ultimate people will use are Destruction Staff.
Wrath Elemental Rage. This is fantastic also in solo arenas, but the downside is it's 250 ultimate. It does have a bigger range and you can precast it, so I will swap this in for very specific situations. But if you want something that's set and forget, absolutely melts health bars, single target, and a little bit of AoE, the Tynes King Gaze is fantastic. We have the bars, let me show you the rotation, and yes, we'll get to gear, what everyone wants to know. Stay with me, I'm educating. So we're back in game. Typically what you wanna do before you like start off a pull is buff longest to shortest, right? So usually what I do is I do channel acceleration on my back and then I'll do recuperative trade assist on my front. 160 seconds, one's 30. And then I usually start the pull by going left to right. Elemental susceptibility, the rune, blockade, ulti switch. So this is how it would look. Buff, use a potion if I need to. I come over here and I go one, two, three, two. Then I bar swap. And you can see just how much damage that thing does. It's crazy. So once you get to the front of your bar, you need to make a decision. Am I going to play in melee range? How much damage and pressure am I take? That determines if I cast Barb Trap. So if I cast Barb Trap on a single target that's basically stationary, it's going to do a lot of damage. And then from there, we need to build up our cruxes, right? So we're going to Light Attack, Flail. Light Attack, Flail. And then the thing lights up, the Fate Carver. Now, before I cast it, though, it's really important to keep that trade of up because it will do extra damage during the B mechanic. And now I'm just going to sit there and laser beam the thing. Now, this is self buffed and I don't have all everything going in my potion, so it's not going to be as much damage as normal. But that's kind of what it looks like. Now, let's do it a little bit faster here. One, two. So I'm going to go one, two. I would cast an ulti now. Bar swap. I'm going to use a potion. A barb trap. And then beam. <laughs> And now I'm looking at my buff. So uh looks like unstable is about to come off. So I go to my back bar, unstable. I got about six seconds left on the other one, so I can just do another beam. And as soon as I go to my back bar here, I'm gonna drop my nuke. So back bar, nuke, one, two, breach, front, tradices, one more time, and then beam it. <laughs> So you really don't want to be on your back bar very long just to basically maintain two, three buffs or debuffs and then go back to that front, do the flail, get those beams up, the fake harbor as much as you can to do the most damage as possible. Appreciate you. Let's move on to the gear. I know you want to talk about it. All right, moving on to the gear. So I'm going to use a new five piece on my body at all times. I have no idea how to pronounce this, so just kill me in the comments. Perfected Ansul's Torment. I think I got it right, actually. Anyways, what this set does, it's really unique, comes from the new trial in Necron, Sanity's Edge. Basically, it's going to give you a static buff of 7% increased damage to enemies at all times. Because the Arcanist really doesn't have a whole lot of gear sets that fit its playstyle, because almost all the gear sets in the game are built off of Light Attack Weaving. This is not. It's simply set and forget. I've experimented with Perfected Coral Riptide. It's a pain to tank your stamina at all times and be cognizant of it. This is literally set and forget, and you get an extra boost of damage if you bash, which you actually can bash quite a bit in solo play. So this, when the new chapter comes out, will be a target for medium armor users running this build. Trust me, you want to collect it. You don't need necessarily need the Perfected version. Yes, it's a little bit better, but it's not dramatic. Just do the normal if you can't do Perfected. For those folks that struggle with resource sustain, I highly recommend Vicious Ophidian. It comes from the base game trials like Hell Raw, Ethereum Archives, and Sanctum Ophidian. It's the best sustain stat. It also gives you mobility, so it carries your survivability if you struggle with resource sustain. Another option for crafters out there is Order's Wrath. This increases your crit damage and crit healing by 8%. It gives you a ton of crit chance as well. One of the most balanced, overall best craftable options in the game. Set and forget will do something for you at all times. Times. And that's my on the body sets that I typically go with. Now, on the front bar, it's pretty obvious what I'm going to go with, and that's good old Deadly Strikes. Deadly Strikes is a Cyrodiil set, so you have to buy it from a vendor specifically inside Cyrodiil, the Broomer Elite vendor, or you can buy it on Traders. It's going to increase the damage of damage over time in channels, which is basically 90 to 99% of all of our damage. So think about that laser beam. 15% more damage to fake carvers and flail is technically a channel, so that's going to hit harder as well. It's actually quite easy to obtain this. And if you can just roll on the bags or buy it from the traders, it's a base game set. Next up is an overland set for people that struggle with survivability. That's Briarheart. When you deal critical damage, you increase your weapon and spell damage for 10 seconds and also heal yourself when you do critical strike. 
right. This will act as like a mini pale order for you. And if you don't have pale order, it's a great substitute to help you with a little bit of survivability. I said to have not mentioned yet, one of the most powerful proc sets in the game, Pillars of Nern coming from Falkreath Hold. It does a massive proc damage. It is stationary though, so you have to be careful with it. But if you want to proc set instead of deadly strikes or you already have Pillars of Nern, that's a go-to. Another one is base gain Spriggan Thorn. It drops from Bankerai. And what this does is give you penetration. So as a beginning player or someone that just has access to Overland, you're most likely not going to reap that 18,200 penetration cap and you don't want to spill over. So this is a good set if you don't have anything else and just need a base game set to get you by in your front bar. Now we're going to do that and we're going to pair it with the Mythic and you guessed what it is. Ring of the Pale Order basically heals you for doing damage and it heals you by a lot. If you do not have Pale Order, it's part of the Antiquity system. They are annoying to get. I would switch out Morse. I would switch Fake Harbor for Prismatic. I would take Fulminating Rune off my bar and put another shield or another heal on because you will be vulnerable. But they have made some good changes, so Flail now heals you. Prismatic Fake Harbor now gives you a huge damage shield, so it's doable without Pale Order. But this thing will carry your survivability, so all you have to focus on is pure raw damage. An alternative option there would be Death Dealer's Fate. It just simply gives you a lot of max stats when you're in combat for over 30 seconds. Aura's Whisper is another option, just gives you a lot of critical chance. It's obnoxious to obtain, but it's a good option if you don't have either of those two. Now you're going to pair that Mythic with a one piece item on your helm. You can run Slime Crawl, which gives you a bit of critical chance, which is nice for medium armor users, or Valken Scoria one piece, which you want more penetration. Again, balance out the crit and the penetration and try to hit close to that cap if you can. Both are really good options. On the back bar, we're going to go with Maelstrom Arena Perfected Crushing Wall. This is going to increase the damage of wall elements. Because we're going to be using it primarily because we need a magic dump, we need more AoE damage, and we want to proc that increased weapon and spell damage and flip to our front bar, it's a go-to. You have a lot of options on this. If you don't like Maelstrom Arena, you don't want to run it, that's fine. Or you don't run a Fire Staff, that's fine. What I would switch to is the two-hander from Maelstrom Arena, Perfected Merciless Charge. This will do very good if you're going to use the Stampede skill instead of Unstable and you're going to use Caltrops instead of Elemental Susceptibility. In that same vein, Perfected Thunderous Volley, exact same situation. You're going to use Endless Hail instead of Unstable, and you're going to use Caltrops instead of Elemental Susceptibility. And then last option here is Agility. It just simply gives you increased max stamina on your back bar, which will equate to basically better healing. Base game comes from Imperial City or buy it from the traders or just doing the random normal dailies constantly like everybody does. All right, ran through the gear. I think I gave you some good options. Links below if you want to run through some more options on my website. Let's go through the nitty gritty finish up the build and show you some footage. Let's talk about race next and I go with the Khajiit primarily because the increased critical damage is so strong solo. People will shy away from this because in group you can actually go over that critical damage cap but most likely you're not unless you're running with super sweat lords that are fully optimized. Next would be a high elf. The reason why a high elf it doesn't give you max stamina but what it does give you is decreased damage taken while you're doing channels. That's really really huge and it stacks with some other decreases that will help your survivability and has good resource sustain as well. And then an Imperial is really good if you just really struggle with resource sustain or you want something that looks humanoid. Attributes, pretty simple here. We're going to go with 64 into stamina. Munda Stone, you have two really solid choices. The Thief, this is going to give you increased critical. It's set and forget. You don't have to worry about it and it influences your healing. The Lover is actually probably a little bit more damage. It's not going to influence your healing and you got to make sure you don't go over 18,200 penetration cap. That's with Major Breach applied. Two choices. I stick with the thief. You want something set and forget. So for champion points, we're going to go with fighting finesse here, grateful strikes, fighting aura, and then thalmaturge. All should really pump up your damage of your main attack. One thing to note, you're a beginning player. Take this passive. It costs nothing for you. It will dramatically increase your survivability. 10% damage done while in PvE. Thank me later. Moving on to the ready spaghetti tree. They're pretty obvious. Balanced vitality, max health, more armor with fortified, rejuvenation with resource sustain, and then bloody renewal for resource sustain on stamina. Now, something to note though is this specific skill here, Bastion, will actually increase the shield of your Primatic Fate Carver. So if you struggle with survivability using that Fate Carver, consider taking this slot of instead of another one if you don't need more resource sustain. And that's the champion points. For food and potion. So basically a lot of people will use these Alliance, you know, war or spell power or weapon damage potions, but you actually don't necessarily need to use them. You can use tripods considering you have Camel Hunter on your front bar, you have weapon and spell damage buff on both bars. So kind of be flexible with what specific potions you use. There's 
a super sweaty one here that I use for this. It's heroism. So it generates ultimate. It's like two dragon parts and columbine. They're ridiculously expensive, but it will give you magic sustain and stamina sustain and also heroism. Tripods are a good substitute if you don't have a gazillion gold that you can dump on this. As far as food goes, um, people will tell you different things. So there's Artanium's takeaway broth. This is probably best overall because it gives you a little bit of health as well. For me specifically, I use a lava foot because I can do pretty good resource sustain and I don't need the health necessarily if I have pale order. But if you have don't have pale order, you're gonna need a little bit extra health. Also consider buy stat food. This is actually health and magic. But if you have really good resources, name, just do the buy stat health and stamina because it'll be even more damage if you don't need to recover. Well, gang, I hope that helps you out. 19 minute Vatashram hollows clear. Absolutely legendary. Thing hits like a truck. It got a lot better as the PTS cycle went on. It's not a perfect class. It's not very beginner friendly until you learn how to aim and use that fake carver appropriately. But once you get the hang of it, the animations, the feel of just seeing that health or melt. It's different, fun, unique. So I hope you check out the website, check the build, and check me out at twitch.tv slash Gaming. My mom claims I'm the best streamer alive. Appreciate you.